Hey guys, Blacksmith Adder here, and I'm back with Chapter 2 of Ulio, The Lion and the Cat. Uh, now two quick things before we start. Number one, you probably will have noticed that I said Blacksmith Adder. It was pointed out to me that there is in fact already a Black Adder in the Age of Empires 2 community, which I was not aware of, and uh, unfortunately I, forgot, I didn't check before I started this channel whether that name was even available. Uh, I'm very sorry. Uh, I didn't mean to step on anybody's toes, so I've changed to Blacksmith Adder, at least for the time being, because the Blacksmith is where you download custom campaigns from on Age of, uh, Age of Kings Heaven. Again, I'm very sorry, I didn't mean to co-opt anyone's username or anything. Uh, and number two is that, uh, unfortunately, while recording the first episode, or chapter one, the video ended up having this really nasty black flickering if, uh, in it, and I figured out what the problem was. I, I just forgot to lock the frame rate on my uh, screen capture program, and so I've done that now. Hopefully that won't be a problem this time around. All right, with that being said, let's get into it. Chapter 2, The Lion and the Cat. Years passed. Ulug felt his strength fading while he watched Ulio grow at his court. Ulug often had a painful flinch of his lips when he looked upon the foundling. He watched the boy with the bright eyes chasing across the yard and doing exceedingly well at his fencing lessons. One day this child would follow him on the throne. Ulug saw that day coming, and the thought made him clench his fist under his coat. Now I didn't read the uh, intro screens in the first episode, but I've decided to do it this time. And I think uh, what happened is uh, Ulug's son died in childbirth. And, and so did so did his wife, the queen. So they presented the foundling, the baby who, who we were kind of protecting in the first chapter, as Ulug's actual son. So, so the heir to the throne is not, as a matter of fact, King Ulug's blood son. That's the story here. The proud little prince noticed his father's stare. Whenever Ulug was near, Ulio's shoulders stiffened and he would lower his head. Why did his father have this strange twitch in his face whenever he looked upon him? Ulio had reached his eighteenth year now. The war had been there ever since he could remember, and yet his father had never taken him to battle. Other men of his age had long been recruited. Only Ulio would stay behind when his father and his men left. The lord seemed to hold his hand over the brazen old king because no stray arrow ever seemed to hit him. Only the number of his men was smaller each time he returned. Sometimes Ulio would spend hours gazing out of the castle, over the woods, into the distance where trails of smoke went up from burning villages and battlefields. The castle was a haven. Fear and death raged outside, but the walls were safe. And yet, the safety of the castle started to stifle the prince. He looked upon his father's warriors with admiration, and greedily soaked in their stories of the world outside. Even the greatest horrors seemed to be more alluring than the emptiness of his castle life, and his father's tick whenever he looked at him out of his grim and wrinkly face. Alright. Hints. Uh... Again, I think I'll just read the hints as I go along, like I did last time. Let's let's get started. The battle is for grown men, Ulio. You stay here until I return. Yes, father. Let's go. Torchbearer. Alright. Ulio would like to find a way out of the castle, but the gates are locked. Ulio must survive. Ulio, now, he, uh, is this a Huskarl or a hero? Because... Depend My prince, I have been ordered to entertain you. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Alright, well. It's gonna follow me around and make sure I don't leave. Gate is locked. I know how you feel, Prince Ulio, but your time will come. One day you'll join the warriors. Not a bad idea, but this tower is too high to jump. I would break all my bones. It's funny, that actually is what I was thinking. What if you jump out? Yeah, not that way. Alright, so we have to bust out of here. Can't even get at that tower. 
Mm. Same thing here. They're all the same height, so... It's all locked. That's that. Maybe I can get into the outpost somehow? I know you can't garrison in an outpost, but... Maybe there's a trigger now. Guess not. You want to help a brother out? Can I go in the castle? Julio walked through the casa hall like he did every day. The old court physicians passed him by, avoiding his eyes. No, Julio thought to himself. He would not stay inside the castle today. Those physicians, man, they're up to no good. They poisoned they poisoned our axe-throwing ninja, Commander Aaron, in the last episode. That didn't work. Oh, here's a tower. Maybe we can sneak out the back. Old watchtower. There's a haystack below that tower. I wonder... Aha! <laughs> Bye, you fool. Go and entertain the serving wenches. <laughs> ah, we're free! Queen Zulio, come back at once! Your father will fry you alive! As Julio stepped into the glade, a tree fell behind him and blocked the path. Oh, no going back now. Julio wants to take part in his father's battle. Bring him to the battleground. I guess that's down here? Yep. And now I was saying before, I don't know if this is just a, a renamed Huskarl or actually a hero unit, so I don't know if he re regenerates health, how careful I need to be to avoid hits. Oh. Alright, take out the men-at-arms first because these archers are going to do absolutely nothing. He has six pierce armor. Alright. He's too strong. Let's get away. White hot rage exploded in Ulio's stomach. He would go after those cowards and force them to make a stand. Okay. Do it. Let's get him. Come on. Get him. Cut them down. All right. Well, I lost almost all my HP, so now what? As the last assassin fell with an ear-shattering scream, Ulio heard the thundering of hooves. He would have to hide from the riders. Then he glanced around and saw a house with a well. The well. He must go into the well. Into the well? How? How do I? Do I just? Oh. <laughs> Do you see the water pop up there? That's very nice. <laughs> Look there, some of our men have been slain. Where are the dirty polecats who did this? Polecats? This house is deserted. I just looked into the window. Ulug's men shall not rejoice for long. One of their villages is nearby. We'll drown those swines in their own blood. Uh-oh. We did this. It's our fault. We killed those assassins. Yes? Hello? You can get Ulu out of the well by clicking on the house. Oh, good to know. I see he's back. Now he's a Huskarl. As Ulio climbed out of the well, he heard screams ringing out. They came from the direction where the riders had gone. And although he had only just hidden from the riders, Ulio decided to follow the screams. Mm, see if there's anything we can do. Forgot to get renamed to, to Ulio again, I guess. No biggie. Stand and deliver. Wait a minute, isn't this Prince Ulio? Scarial. Yes, we'll get a huge ransom for him. Hold him, guys, but don't... Oh, these guys are way too strong. I can't fight him. What do I do? Uh, you haven't seen any riders coming along this way by coincidence? Yes, but they did not see us. We're not stupid to attack such a strong force. And now, my prince... Uh, okay, I go. must run up to the to the village, the top corner of the map. The bandits are so eager for the ransom, they will blindly run after him and into Ulio's enemies. Be aware, though, as soon as you're in the village, find a place to hide, or you must you will get crushed. All right, run. 
Jesus. Okay, let's go. Okay, where can I hide? In the town center, maybe? Into the town center. Alright, that'll do it. Hopefully the bandits will be enough to take out... Hopefully they can, like, eliminate each other and I won't have to fight anything. Keep fighting. Tom the Axe. Hook Nose Jim. I like these names. Town center won't last much longer. Maybe I should go in the tower. Yep, get in the tower. Run! Okay. I should be... I should be control this tower. This guy has 2 HP. Come on, one shot would take him out. I guess I have to wait for the tower to just pick these guys. Oh, the tower has a lot of extra attack, though. That's good. It looks good to have those fools kill each other. <laughs> you rescued our village! Thank you, Prince Ulio. Thank you! We get a bit of a Celtic jig to celebrate, I guess. You're welcome, you good people. Now I must be on my way. I want to join my father in battle. Alright, let's save. We learned our lesson last time. Meanwhile... Outrageous! People have been beheaded for less! My army is waiting for me! I beg your pardon, your majesty, but fixing a horseshoe takes some time. I'm working as fast as I can. Alright, so he's been delayed. I like this little fire effect here. His the blacksmith's furnace. The battlefield is down in the south. I'm on the right way. I just hope I don't run into my father too early. Okay, so I need to avoid him and get to the get to the battlefield. Maybe I can beat him to the battlefield actually. Alright. Man, this guy's line of sight is terrible. I don't like that. Can't see anything coming. Is this a dead end? No, I'm going this way. Oh, uh oh. Ah! Jeez. Alright, do I stand in. F oh, let's see if I can find some high ground or something to fight these guys from. High ground would be nice. He does regenerate, that's good. So this is this must be a hero unit rather than a Huskarl. Uh-oh. Oh, oh. I don't want to run into my dad. Can I take these guys out? Uh, one of these is hurt already, so... I'll take him out next. I think I should be able to handle this. Bunch of wolves. Okay, I don't think I need to, I think I'll... I can't run into the dad. But... Just for shits and giggles, let's see what happens when we do. <laughs> hey dad! Can I come to the battle? Oh, Ulug. What happens? Ulio, how dare you leave the castle without my consent? Uh... Surprise! Well, I, uh... What shall I do with you? Let me see. Well, my son, you will return to the castle now. I shall think about a punishment when I return from battle. Alright. Now what? I have to go back to the castle? Nah, screw that. Let's load it up. <laughs> that wasn't as funny as I thought it would be. Oh well. Alright, no more games. This is the way to go. I think there's a little sneak, a slip way through the woods here. As long as we don't run into any more wolves. Well, that's a dead end. Thank you for that. 
This guy's really slow. I wish we could research, research squires. That would be helpful. And tracking. Man, if only I had tracking, said no one ever. Alright. I think we managed to avoid King Ulug. I'm not really sure what Ulio's game plan is here. I mean, how is he supposed to take part in the battle? I mean, unless he, like, disguises himself. I guess we'll see. Oh, are we here? There's an archer. Welcome, my prince. Has your father sent you? Why, yes, of, of course he sent me. I see, I see. Wait a minute, I shall inform my soldiers. Hey, listen up, everybody. Our king has sent his own son to take over the command of this battle. Well, actually, I just came to... <laughs> hey, oh, man. You done screwed up, Ulio. <laughs> uh oh My prince, we are awaiting your orders. Are these all mine now? Oh, they are. Okay, well, this is a, this is a safe spot if ever I saw one. Okay, so... This is what we're facing. Cavalier, archers, men-at-arms. Pretty similar force to us. We have some Huskarls, spearmen, skirmishers, archers. Select the commander to give the battle sign. This will only work if Ulio is near enough to the battlefield to encourage his soldiers. All right, so that's to stop us from being like scaredy cats and just sticking Ulio at the way back of the battle because we have to keep him alive. All right, let's read the hints, see if there's any hints. Oh, sorry. Hints. Save often. Avoid Marco and Polo. You'll miss some of... Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, Leo meets the bandits, etc., etc. The battle scene. The right tactic will decide if you get crushed or if you beat it easily. The right formation might do wonders, but that won't be enough. When the battle begins, Ulio must stay within sight of the soldiers. Do not step beyond the broken cart. If he runs away, the soldiers will panic and start losing the battle. Okay, so this is the broke. This is the line that we have to stay in front of. Okay, that's not too bad. I can still keep him out of the action. All right. All right. Forward, men to victory. Charge! Hey, looks like they're charging us. Let's get the huskarls out of the way. We're gonna need them for archers. Spearmen into the fray. Oh boy. Oh, they have a mangonel. Let's see if we can charge the mangonel. Because we don't want to be fighting against that. Someone destroy the mangonel! I'm trying! Yeah, we gotta get that mangonel out of the... Okay, we'll send the, the Huskarls through because the Huskarls are pretty immune to... Oh boy, things are not actually going that well. Things are really not going that well. Okay, they're all for... Julio's got a lot of heat on him right now, unfortunately. Oh, I don't think we won this, guys. I don't think... yeah, this isn't looking good. Uh-oh. Oh boy. The battle is lost. Wow, I just got my ass handed to me. Well, let's try that again. Okay, maybe we need to, like, organize a bit better. We'll get the archers together. Get the skirmishers behind the, as well with the archers. Put the spearmen out in front. And Huskarl, I guess we should send the Huskarls kind of through to try and take out their archers, maybe? And then I guess we should use the knight and the two scouts to circle around the back and take out the mangonel before it can do any damage. Okay. There, okay. There's a there's a hill here, so if we make sure we're doing most of our fighting on this hill, that should that would be a good idea. Okay. Put these guys on defensive stance so that they stay more or less in this area. Keep Julio behind. All right. Let's give it another shot. They charge us, which is interesting. 
Alright, Mangonel should be should be able to take it out from behind now. That's good. Okay, where are my spearmen? This dang cavalier. Alright, this looks a bit better. Let's see if we can take out all these spearmen. All the spearmen aren't that. Okay, how many house cars do we still have? Uh, this is looking a bit better. Maybe I've got it this time. It's close though, man. It's very close. <laughs> We've died for nothing. Oh, it was, a, it was a lot closer. I'm getting there. I'm getting there, you guys. I'm learning. I'm slowly learning. God, my micro is so bad. All right. All right, you guys. I think this time I finally managed to do it. I don't know what made the difference this time. Sheer dumb luck. Slightly better tactics. Well, I thought the battle in the first I thought the battle in the first scenario didn't go that well. This is really a disaster. But I have a few guys left. We have won the battle. Yeah, that dark music is about right. Look at what's left of this of the army. Not that much. Wow, I'm clearly a little bit rusty. I don't think I don't think Ulug is going to be very happy when he turns up and the battle has been fought and his army has been decimated by his incompetent son. All men gather here. No, oh, here he comes. Time to face the music. What happened here? Oh, hello, father. I hear you took over the command of this battle? Yes, father, but I won it! On the fourth try. On the fourth try you won it. Won it? Hmm, <laughs> let me count the survivors of your glorious battle. I mean, how many men? I have like 10 men left. I mean, not even 15 survivors? Are you mad? <laughs> I like. You shall not play war anymore, Ulio. I shall send you to a monastery. The monks shall teach you to respect your father. Even though he's not his father. Spoilers. Well, we know that already. I like that there are... It seems like... Ah, sorry. Very well, Ulio. You know our principles are hard work and prayer. Ora et labora. As for the ora, you should not make such a sour face when you sing with the friars. As for the labora, chop down this pine tree here. It takes all the light from my room. <laughs> now grab your axe and go for it, my prince. Mountain Monastery. Like I was saying before, I like how it seems like there would have been probably different dialogue depending on how many soldiers I had left after the battle. So if I had had more than 15 soldiers, maybe my father would have been begrudgingly impressed by my tactical acumen. As it was, I failed. Alright. Ulio must chop down the tree near the monastery and start piling the wood in the lumber camp. He doesn't know yet that something will distract him soon. So I've been exiled to, these, to this monastery. Gotta chop down this tree. Appease the abbot. Hmm... Nothing to do but wait, I guess, until he's done with the tree. At least I seem to have handcart. <laughs> tut tut, my prince, your language resembles that of a peasant. I like how they've kind of spruced up this monastery with the little extra buildings and things. Map copy on top of each other. So it's not just one monastery building. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, here's something's coming. A carriage from King Agurik. Welcome, my lady. Are you coming to make a confession? Yes, father. Joan the maid. I don't think that's her real name. Oh, hello, your ladyship. May the Lord bless all your ways. These poor guys, they don't probably get to see women that often. Go away, you uncouth fools. My lady, would you please follow me inside? Yes, father. <laughs> all the monks. What, a woman? Let me see. Poor guys. After you. Oh, what are they up to in there? I don't even want to know. Stop gaping, my prince. Get on with your work. I can't. Now I can. Julio has two possibilities now. Either he continues chopping the tree or he has a good look around the place. Alright, well... Let's have a good look around the place. I'm not really sure why I'm stockpiling the wood. Hey, all the monks just standing around here. Doing nothing. Can I get out? Maybe I can cut some other tree in a, like in a hole in the wall or something? It's a mill. It's not. Nice carriage you've got there. Thanks. Julio could climb on the back of the cart. Could he now? He could try. Hmm. Let's see. Or I keep cho chopping the tree, but... As Ulio peeped through the window, he was struck again how beautiful the unknown lady was. Quit spying, you freak. Alright. Before we try anything rash, let's save. See what happens. Mm, don't mind me, don't mind me. Ulio has climbed into the cart. So it seems like this is the level of escaping places. Hey, don't try any stupid tricks, will you? Get out! That's better, son. Now go before I use my stick on you. Well, that didn't work. Julio was boiling with anger. Didn't that man know who he was? But then he resisted his urge to throw himself onto the driver. He must not make a riot now. The monks had not noticed anything yet. And if they learned of his attempt to flee, things would go from bad to worse. Fuming with rage, Julio decided to continue chopping wood. Alright. I guess our mind has been made up for us. Like I, so, like I was saying, this is the second time in this episode that we've had to try and escape from a confined space. I, I sense a theme. Now maybe something will happen once we finally finish with this stupid tree. Not too much left. Mm -hmm. If this was HD, I would speed it up, but I don't think you can do that on the original game. Nope, doesn't look like it. We're almost done anyway. Wait a minute. There's a hole under that tree. A hole? Julio has climbed into the hole. Interesting. Thank you, Father. My pleasure. May the Lord always protect you, child. Now, are we supposed to assume that something untoward went on? I don't know. Goodbye, child. Julio, have you finished that tree yet? <gasps> Gasp. My brothers, where is Ulio? And what is that hole in the ground? And could the two possibly be connected? Phew, where am I? Oh, jeez. <laughs> As the horse ran over him, Ulio lost his consciousness. Epic fail. He heard voices from far away, not back to the monks, he thought in the darkness. Please don't let them bring me back to the monks. One day later, at King Agurik's castle. 
What did you bring me, my daughter? An injured man? Yes, father. He ran into our carriage before we could stop. Almighty, Lua, do you know who your carriage knocked over? It's Prince Ulio, my archenemy's son. Guards! What shall I do with you, my prince? Are we going to get into kind of a Romeo and Juliet kind of situation with the, with the daughter of the enemy king? Father, please. What is it, Luana? You don't want you to spare my archenemy's son, do you? After all Ulug did to me? What good is there in slaying a helpless man? You should at least give him a fair chance. You shall have your will, daughter. I shall not have him executed. Instead, I shall grant him death with a weapon in his hand. Throw him into the dungeons, and prepare a joust. Alright, we're gonna have to go through some sort of trial by combat, I guess. When Ulia woke up, everything around him was cold and damp. We're in a cell. Prince Ulio, a word with you. What is it? I feel guilty for bringing you here. My father wants you dead. Listen, my prince. Tomorrow there will be a joust. They want you to lose, so they will give your opponent a sharper weapon. You cannot win. Please do not cry. A sharper weapon, you say? Thank you for the warning. The other man had better handle his sharper weapon well. I shall pray for you. Yeah, this is... Bunyo heard her footsteps fade away and laid down on the straw. So tomorrow he would have to face an opponent with a superior weapon. What to do? As he finally fell asleep, he had a weird dream. He saw a cat fighting a lion. Title drop. It's the name of the scenario. The cat fled up on the mountain with a lion pursuing it. But the higher the cat climbed, the more it grew and grew and grew. As it reached the mountain top, the cat was so big that it overshadowed the valley. And as the giant cat turned around to face the lion, it let out a mighty roar, and suddenly the cat's head blurred, and Ulia looked into his own face. So what are we to make of that? Okay. Oh, okay. Defeat the other paladin in battle, but watch out. On even ground, your opponent is slightly stronger than you. Save your game! Thanks for the reminder. Okay, so I think all that bit, all that nonsense about the cat and the lion is basically just a little hint to tell you to take the high ground. See this little hill here? That's exactly where we're going to go. Go on. Come at me, bro. Yeah, see, he has plus three, and I just have 15. Come on. Aha. Is it working? I think it's working. It might just be working. Oh, yeah. What? This is impossible. This cannot be. I'd like to see the look on his face right about now. Put him back into the dungeon. Wait a minute, that's not fair. I'm not going back into your filthy dungeon, Agurik. I won this just fair and square. A hushed silence fell over the place. People looked upon Agurik, then on Ulio on his horse, who was bleeding profusely. Both men stared at each other. You would rather die, would you? Would you rather die? Yes or no? <laughs> what if I say yes? Yes. Of course I would. You are my arch enemy's breed, Ulio, yet I am impressed by your courage. You have earned a chance to trade your life for your freedom. 
Open the fence. Oh, wow, that, that actually worked. Wow. You shall leave this ground unharmed, but you'll be at the mercy of my men as soon as you have gone beyond the fence. Okay, so the counterintuitive choice actually ended up working. That was a neat trick, by the way, with the opening the palisade. Oh. Enemy. Okay, here they come. Let's, let's get out of here. At least I'm on a horse now. This tower is going to do nothing to me. Oh, okay, I don't really want to fight a halberdier, so let's run. Ooh, that took a big chunk out of- oh wow. That took so much HP, oh my gosh, how am I ever gonna get out of here? Run! Just as long as I don't take another hit from a halberd- oh my god. Run! Oh, no, 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 no. oh boy, oh boy. Bad news, bad news bears. Bad news! Ah, <laughs> I'm stuck in this, in this cemetery, I'm so screwed. Alright, everyone. Run, and I'm dead. All right, let's try that again. I won't waste my time. Say yes. yes. Let me out. You know, it's not a good custom scenario unless you have to replay a few spots. Because you gain information by losing and that helps you win the second or third or fourth or twelfth or however many times it takes. <laughs> let's see if there's some hints actually. Uh, let's see. The battle scene. Ulio's dream about the lion and the cat will give you a life saving. Okay, we already had that. You do not want to attack the stable lad. After all, he opened the fence for you. Walk through hints. We don't need that. All right. No hints about which way to go after you're out. It's like, you can leave this ground unharmed, but you have to run through my entire castle before... Yeah, okay. Let's get a move on. Charge! Run. That one halberdier is going to get a hit on me because there's not enough room to maneuver around him. There's nothing I can do about that. I can just make sure he, t he hits me uphill. Come on. Okay, he hit me uphill. That's good. I only took about 30 damage. Last time I took 50. Now this way? Yeah. Spearman isn't too bad. He's holding the door for me, which is nice. That halberdier, okay, this time I'm going south. I guess I'm running to my castle? I don't really know which way to go. Alright. Let's just see how it goes. I don't know the lay of the land, so... Bring Ulio back to his father's castle, like I said. Right, should I stop and heal up, or are they still after me? Uh, I think I'll keep going. Should be going this way. Is there a way through? Here? Yes. Uh, this wasn't too difficult. Oh, this is only the secret entrance. I don't think I can... Yeah, because uh, because it said a tree fell and blocked the way. Oh, a knight. That's not good. I can fight a knight one-on-one, -on -one, but with these halberdiers after me? Another knight. Oh my gosh. Okay. Um... Well, they're a little slower than me. I think maybe I have hus hus uh, husbandry, and they don't. Halberdier, don't want to fight that. Maybe I can circle around him. Maybe I can get to, like, some of my old friends or something. The, the monastery might be able to help me. The blacksmith? Help me, blacksmith! Quickly, my prince, I'll try to hold him up. Oh, good. he's sacrificing himself for me. Oh, I feel terrible. Can I go this way? No. Alright, I have no idea where I'm going. I hope this is right. Archers? Man, he's just like, he's like, okay, I'll let you go, but then I'll just fill the roads with my scouts and stuff. Maybe I can go to the monastery and they'll help me. A light cab I could take. The gate's locked. All right. All right, get out of here. One hit from a halberdier is safe. Two hits is lethal. 
And now I'm not sure I can take the light cav- Oh, I could if I had an uphill advantage. And the light cavalry can catch up with me, a knight can't. There's a small difference in speed between them, but it makes the difference, I think. Alright, here's a hill. Come on! Why didn't he- That was stupid. I'm on no attack stance, that's why. Oh boy, I feel like this is going to be a dead end. How do I get back to the castle? This is the most trackless wilderness. The wolf could at least do me the favor of attacking them instead of me. Through the swamp here. Alright, I think I made it. Phew, that was a very roundabout way I took, but it worked. Let me in! Prince Ulio is back. Our home safe. We're home safe, boys. <laughs> Jump off his horse. Ulio, I heard you fell into my arch enemy's hands. I'm so relieved to see you're alive. Ooh, he does not sound well. You look pale, father. Yes, my son. There has been a stinging pain in my chest for weeks. Must be the chill in the castle. I'm sure. Will you put me back into the monastery now, father? Oh, look at him. Look at his puppy dog eyes. No, actually, I am proud of you, son. Oh, wow. All right. The end. Uh, well, that, I I quite like that level. It's it's actually it actually is quite different from the first one. The first one is mostly a a fixed force where you have a group of soldiers and you just have to get from point A to point B across the map. This one had a a bit of that, but it was a little bit more creative, like with the trying to escape from the from the castle and then later on trying to escape from the monastery. That was quite fun. The battle in the middle was was really well designed. I mean, the fact that you can fail at it. Uh, fail at it three times and then win and have it be such a close margin the balance of that is really top notch yeah and then the, the, later on the joust is is a nice little piece of design as well with the the, the dream and the hill i mean it's all it's it's a bit straightforward but yeah good times let's have a look around the map see if there's anything i missed i guess everything else is just maybe i don't know Alternate ways you could run, maybe, to get to get back to the castle. You could run around. You could, I could have gone this way instead of all the way down to the monastery and around. I'm not sure what this is. A placeholder unit. Yeah. Anyway, let's see what see what the epilogue has to say. Ulug sat up in his bed, his chest shaking with another violent cough, yet his face was beaming as he pulled one of his doctors by the sleeve to get his attention. And then, at the joust, the joust, you know, Ulio said to Urgurik, Ulug began, and interrupted himself as usual. Oh, but let us have Ulio tell us himself. The ill king nodded to Ulio as another fit of coughing made his body shake. My son, he said, my son. The physicians rolled their eyes, and one of them looked at Ulio with a strained smile. Oh, we are dying to hear what your son said to Agurik, one of them said in a pressed voice. Please, your royal highness. For the first time, Ulio had gained his father's respect. Ulug's disease had forced him into his sickbed, yet his eyes burned with the old, unforgiving wrath. He made Ulio repeat his story about the joust and his escape dozens of times. At first, Ulio had been proud to repeat his story over and over again, but as it turned into a daily routine, he felt more and more awkward about it. Even Ulio's battle against Agurik's men, which had infuriated Ulug half a year ago, had suddenly become a heroic story that the ill king would repeat to everybody. Ulug seemed to be in steady decline. Servants started talking behind the backs of their hands, and wenches were giggling in their corners. The formerly fearsome king was turning into a babbling old man. There had not been any skirmishes with Agurik's forces for weeks. Had Ulio's victory at the joust and his escape petrified the enemy king? Not likely. Or was Agurik preparing a great attack to deal the death blow to Ulug? There could not be any better moment for this. Ulug was fading, and his people shuffled through the muddy streets with dulled eyes. 
Thirty-five years of war had drained people out of strength and courage. And yet, those were not the only thoughts brooding on Ulio's mind. He could not forget Luana's face and her tears when she had visited him in the dungeon. Was this love? Yes, it had to be. What else could it be? Told you, we're heading for a Romeo and Juliet play uh, storyline here. All right. 51 kills, 25 losses. I don't want to know how many extra losses I incurred the first three times I tried that battle in the middle. Let's check out the rest of the statistics, if you like. You can always pause at any point. <laughs> the battle here. <laughs> That's the only time I had anything other than one guy. All right. That was chapter two, The Lion and the Cat. Uh, next one up is chapter three, Triangle of Hate. I'll be back with that one really soon. Thanks for watching as always, and see you next time. Bye.